afternoon. Welcome to Music Scrap, the musical scrapper. And yeah, I don't usually say, but my name is Jean. <laughs> I don't know why I never say that. But uh, this is recording two. This is part two of my mono printing 101. Part one was easy one, two, and three paint color backgrounds. So part two, what I'm going to show you is how to add some texture uh, to those background prints and how to use stencils and masks on your jelly plate prints. So I'm still going to use simple two and three color backgrounds, but I'm going to show you adding textures and going to show using stencils. Okay, so let's start with some purple. Where's my purple? So I'm going to do some purple, two, two shades of purple. Man, I'm going to have to make labels and make these paint for my paint colors. All right, so the light purple is Brilliant Purple, Liquitex, and Violet by Artist Loft. So I'm going to lay them down like I normally, like I did with my other print. Two colors, I'm going to just randomly put it on. And those of you who know me know I'm a control freak. And so to this day, I still don't totally understand why I love jelly printing so much because I can't control how the paint is going to what it's going to look like on my plate on my print on my paper because i mean you can do purposeful mono printing but <laughs> that's a different technique for a different day okay so now you can add texture besides my <laughs> texture i'm getting from my brayer by using many household items. This is a piece of shelf liner. You know that non-skid shelf liner that you can get? And notice it has really cool ridged texture. So I'm simply going to lay this down on my plate. I'm going to gently tap it. I don't want to tap it hard because I don't want to lift all the paint off. I just want to put some of the texture on there. Now you can take this and off to the side, I'm going to lay it on my deli paper and print that on my deli paper. <clears throat> I'll show you the deli paper. There we go. So I've added some. All right. Now, I think I'm just going to print this right on some deli paper so you can see what it looks like to print. So you can use cardstock, you can use deli paper. This is 12 by 12 deli paper, so it's great because, and I'm gonna take this one that doesn't have the whole page printed, and I'm just going to add a strip here, pull that. Put this one over here. Pull that. All right. So there we go. Now, even though I wiped off my plate of the red and yellow, I obviously didn't get it all cleaned off. Look what color I made. I made a little bit of mud, but do I care? No. I don't care. It's not a really ugly brown. It's kind of like a peachy, sandy color brown. No big deal. Now I'm going to take a piece of cardstock. Now, you can use anything for texture. 
I have a whole bucket here. I'll let's show you in a minute once I get this pulled up. I have a whole bucket where I've thrown stuff in. And I'll do some more examples for you. This is one of the reasons why I don't usually clean my jelly plate in between. Because I love all this extra pulled stuff. I don't care that it's creating brown. It's not a totally ugly brown. It's kind of interesting. It's adding to my purple choices. But it shows you that if you don't want that, you have to completely clean your plate in between. And I'm just not willing to do that. <laughs> Colleen's playing along and on her phone. So once again, if you're watching this recording, there is live chat. I'm recording this live on Ustream, so even though it is tutorials, I may be asked some questions online or reply to comments being made in the chat here. So, But Eileen, I, I, I made that comment because there are some people who would care about that. I just don't happen to. That's what I love about the jelly plate. I'm going to attempt to clean it off, but if I get it totally cleaned off, as I said, I don't care. You can see by the other side of my plate that it's filthy dirty, because I rarely clean my plate. So, Eileen is in the corner and she just needs to put another drink in her hand so she can stop typing. <laughs> Carol! Hello! Hello, hello, Carol in OK. So nice to see you. I am doing some jelly plating tutorials today. Okay. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to put some more colors down. Let's see. Let's do some colors. Let's do some. Where's my teals? Mm, where are my teals? Good question. This one and this one. And then teals are yellow and blue. So I'm going to add some yellow. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me see what colors these are. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. So, Liquitex, Liquitex Basics, uh, Thalo Cyan Green. Jeez Louise. Could it be more complicated? Bright Aqua Green. And Artist Loft Brilliant Yellow. So let's see what these three do. Now, I was going to show you my bin here. I want to be careful because I don't want to sit it totally on my jelly plate because it might mark it. I have some, this is that old piece of that kind of crocheted, maybe I'll use this on this one. It's like crocheted runner or whatever that would you would use for a tablecloth or a runner. I've got these bamboo coasters. This is a jelly. I'm going to use that one. This is a hot plate thing. They got a dollar store. 
I have bottle caps. We'll be using some of those later. I've got, this is another, um, this is another runner for inside your drawers or on your, inside your cupboards for non-slip. I got a piece of plastic that came off, I don't know, something, little pens or something. There's lace. I've got a Smarty bottle because it has a slightly larger cap. This tape, drywall tape works great. I've got some lace in here that has some cool texture. So just get a bin, throw stuff in. I have a flower foam stamp. I'll talk about that when I do. So lots of cool stuff. I have one of those basting things that can do marks. Um... What else do I have? Oh, another little foam, foam stamp. Oh, that's a foam roller. Where I don't, I'm not sure where my handle went for that roller. That's an extra. Oh, yeah, I'm going to use that. This is a stamp roller. I'm going to use that. Let's see. Let's use this. This is foam, fun foam. It's textured fun foam star. Yeah. All right. So you just go through, throw stuff in a bucket that can add texture and have fun. All right. So let's add some colors. No embossed paper, but I do have my new. This is my fun foam that I found at Dollarama. Um, Carrie Dollarama, my Dollarama had these textured fun foam thingies. 250. It's hard to see. Sorry, they're really freaking out the camera lighting for some reason. So I think I'll use, maybe I'll use this dot one. So I'm going to do little pieces of texture in different spots of this one. Okay. So this is the darker green. And I'll try not to put too much on this time. The medium and the yellow. Oh my lord, I always work myself into a weird spot. Okay, hold on. I am going to grab a baby wipe for my roller here. Every now and then I'll do this. Actually roll onto a baby wipe. Cleans it down a little bit better. Yes, Eileen, send me some textured wallpaper. I did have one piece of textured <laughs> wallpaper. Can't remember where I found it, but I kind of used it so much that the texture all got filled in with paint. <laughs> so, uh, so I had to kind of chuck it out. Whoops. Have. Oh, I've worked myself into a corner again. Oh, making some nice lime green, but I do want some yellow, so I'm going to go back and try and get a little bit of yellow here. It's a pretty lime green that that makes. There we go. All right, so sometimes you mix it a little too much. Okay, so I'm going to put a 
some of this on. So I'm just going to use it. So there's some of that. I'm going to add a spot. These are like small honeycombs. So hexagons there. I'm going to use that in a spot. So you don't have to use the same texture over the whole thing. So this actually has two sides that you can use. So I'm going to use that side. So what it's doing is it's pulling off paint. And I have a little bit of space left. So I'm going to take my sea sponge. I wonder if I can find it. I had it a minute ago. Where the heck did it go? Oh, I think I have another piece in here. I do. I'm going to take a sea sponge and go across the top here. And... I have a little spot down here that doesn't have any texture, so I'm going to use my sea sponge down there as well. There we go. All right. Jelly paper, here I come. Hey, Sam, welcome back. Yeah. The chat has been disconnecting all day. Well, actually, for the last couple of days, chat's been disconnecting. They, IBM may be reworking their chat. They've got the new video format up, so now they may be reworking the chat since IBM took over Ustream. So that could be why. All right, so I'm going to try and show you this funky. So you can see some texture in there. It'll show better on this next piece because it's a little bit bigger. And then I'll use <sighs> ah! Oh no. It gets wet, so you have to be careful with your jelly deli paper. <laughs> and it's sticking together. There we go. Okay, just a minute. I'm going to get, hold on. You'll see the texture better. Just a moment, please. One moment, please. <clears throat> I'm just gonna get the top part here. And the side, I'm not sure why I didn't put over to the edge, but okay. One moment, I will show it to you again so you can see the texture better. There we go. So these are what are called ghost prints when you do the second printing, second pull. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <laughs> Me and my painty hands, I know. Such a change from two years ago. So now the textures show up better on the ghost print because there's not as much paint on the ghost print, which is the second printing is called the ghost print. So there you can see all the different textures. So you can see where this yellow and the teal, the bright, brilliant green, excuse me, um, mixed to make a nice lime green here. And you get the two levels of the tealy green when they mix. All right, let me see if I can get 
deli paper often picks up these leftovers a little better than cardstock will because it's thinner. All right, so that's adding texture. So you can use anything that is textured to add texture to your prints. So I'm going to try and show some here. It's wet, so it's hard to hold up. I should have printed it on paper. But... <laughs> so you can see the textures there. Okay. So now I'm going to do a couple of prints using some stencils. So there's a couple of ways you can use stencils on your jelly plate. Number one, I'm going to show you first how you can add paint to your plate using through a stencil. And then the other way is how you can pull up paint off the plate through a stencil. So I'm going to show you both versions. Now, what is the difference between a stencil and a mask, you may ask? Well, it's the first thing I'm going to tell you. I'm going to show you a stencil. All right. Adds has the shape cut out of it. Oh, let me see. I want to try and find one. Just a moment, please. I should have had this out. I'm ready to go. Oh, I want to use this one. I haven't used this patty one yet, so I'm going to use this one. <clears throat> Oh no, I hope I can find my, uh, I put my, put my masks in a separate page and now I can't find them. I'm sorry to those who are watching the recording, but, oh wait now, maybe they're here. Oh, good luck, Jean. Just a moment, please. If you're watching on YouTube, please fast forward. I thought I was ready, but they're in a pile here. I'm going to do the pile somewhere. Where are my ones that I want? Just a moment. They're in a baggie so that they would be ready for you. Darn it. But, where in the pile is that bag? Just a moment. <clears throat> I may have to move things one at a time here. paper dry because it's driving me crazy. All right, let me go through this pile again. One thing at a time. That's my sticker book. Oh, hold on. Okay, I think I found it. Yes, I did. Woo. Okay. Move my sticker nation book before it gets paint all over it. Okay, found it. Woohoo. All right. The difference between stencils and masks. A mask covers up stuff. A stencil opens it up. So, I have a cutout. Hold on. This, oh, oh, that bent. This is a stencil. That got bent. 
There we go. This is a stencil of hands. Hey, Poppy. <laughs> okay. Here is the mask. Okay. So when you use a stencil, the paint that you add is the shape of the cut. On a mask, when you add paint, it the paint surrounds the shape. So the paint outlines the shape on a mask. On a stencil, the paint becomes the shape. Stencil, mask. A mask creates negative space creates negative space. A stencil creates positive space. Now, well, it's harder to tell in the stencil. <laughs> it's easier to see that it's hands in the, in the mask. <laughs> so, all right, so let's do step one with a stencil. I guess I could have done this as a separate recording, but step one. I am going to add the paint Oh, yarn. I'm not surprised I found yarn. I'm doing a crochet project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my stencil on. I am going to take a spouncer. I am going to take my paint. Let's see. So what colors do I want to use for my, hmm, I would like to use, let's see, let's use, hmm, I'm going to use some pedios. So I'm going to use orange. And I'm going to use pink. No, I'm not. I'm going to use pink. Oh, well, I was going to use my red. Oh, there it is. I'm going to use pink and red. And orange. Let's use all three. So I'm going to put down a little bit of pink. A little bit of orange. And a little bit of red. I'm not going to use my spouncer. I'm going to use... to use sponges now you can use make if you use makeup wedges or you can use sponges these sponges give a little more texture because the the foam isn't they're just kitchen sponges there's more bubbles in the foam so you get a little more texture all right so red and I probably don't have enough but let's just randomly add these colors. Definitely need a little more red. So you would not, I'm stenciling just like you would on a piece of paper, but I'm putting it onto the jelly plate. And you might say, well, why don't you just stencil onto the paper? And yes, you can do that. 
The thing is, the jelly plate is soft. When I pull a print, you are going to get a slightly different effect in your print than if you, oops, stencil it directly onto your paper project. to try and move a little faster my it's not going on really thick so it's going to dry fairly quickly here all right so now I'm going to pick this up and as you can see I'm adding more and more mess to my scene here paper Ta-da Nice to see you, Laura. Glad you came in. Okay, so that is adding the paint through the stencil to the page. Now, let's see. Let's use the same stencil, okay? And I'm going to wipe it off. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of deli paper. Je yeah, deli paper, <laughs> deli jelly, and I'm going to clean it off a little bit through there because so this doesn't transfer, so it kind of gives you a better idea if you use a clean stencil what's going to happen because I don't usually use a clean stencil. I'm going to use the same stencil so you can see if there's a significant difference in doing it the opposite way, pulling the paint through the stencil. So we're, let's do that as a test to see if it makes a difference. Okay, so now you can see I've got some little faint uh, feathers on that. Okay, all right. So I'm just going to give a quick wipe here. All right, so I'm going to take the same three colors. This is PBO Violet Blue. <laughs> I use this enough. I don't have to look at the color. This is PBO Dyna Orange Yellow. PBO Dyna Red Blue. So they're all Dyna iridescent colors. And Patty Tully Parish is the reason I'm hooked on these. So what I'm going to do is mix these. I need a little more pink up here. Didn't get enough pink on. Now, I'm going to put down the stencil, and I'm going to do a pull onto the cardstock, and we'll see. Now, try not to let your cardstock move. 
that's extremely important for this or you're going to get a smeared stencil you have to really work this is cardstock you have to really work that cardstock into the stencil because this is a pretty fine detailed stencil probably would have worked better on thin paper but I want to show you the difference on your cardstock which is one reason why I do it the other way if I want this kind of a print all right there you go other than the fact that it's the opposite way now I have more paint on my plate so I get a darker image one ray one reason okay so it's a very similar look but <clears throat> actually that pulled through nicer than I thought usually these detailed ones the paint doesn't come through as well as it did on that one which is why I used the first technique with detailed Ah, hold on. Okay, I want to clean that off in a second. I want to get another piece of paper here to show you the leftover here. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that on a, my layering video, Carrie. Don't let me forget. I'm trying to separate the techniques, even though you can, you know, use these techniques together. Now, of course, I'm going to get the reverse. So now I'm left. Oh, and look at that yumminess that I'm pulling up because I didn't totally clean my plate. Look at that yumminess. How can you not love those other colors pulling up? I love it. Love it. Love it. Look at that print. So now this gives you like a fossil look. So it's almost like fossils in a really strange orange rock. But anyway, that gives you like a fossil look. <laughs> yes, Dixie, I'm actually doing tutorials today. So that I'm specifically trying to do it as separate tutorials for on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay. Now, where's which one's the stencil? Here's the stencil. So I'm going to take the stencil also and a piece of Thank you guys my friends in the box my fibs as we like to call our chatters are loving these prints you know and I love what I do too and of course I will also tell you if what I do I it sucks or I don't like what I do but I don't really have a problem with saying hey I really like how this turns out I mean, why do art if you don't like what you're doing, really? It's not bragging. Like, I'm not saying, oh, look at this. It's so much better than so-and-so's. Or it's like, so much, like, so awesome. You know, that's bragging. But saying, I really like how this turned out, that's not bragging. That's enjoying. That 
that's enjoying your art. And in my opinion, that's what art's all about. Why do it if you don't like what you're doing? Or hate what you're doing. <laughs> hate what ends up. Okay, I still have some pretty wet paint on this, so I'm going to just do... See what happens here. I'm going to take the back side of this. See if I can clean it off a little bit more. I don't, because I don't clean my stencils. I have yet to clean stencils other than... There. Other than getting them dry enough to put them back in. Well, I don't store them in the bag, but this one I don't have organized with my in my patty file yet, so... Okay, so now let's do a mask. Let's find my stencil, my hand mask here. Actually, oh, shoot. I'm going to show you a mask on my layering tutorial. So if you want to see how I use a mask, um, move on to my layering um, tutorial. Let me put these back away. And so that is using adding texture and using stencils on your jelly plate. Thank you so much for watching part two.